Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel, Hi Mathematics. Today we have a very interesting algebra question. We have a cubed plus a squared equal to 36, and we need to find our a. If you have your solution, your answer, you can also write your solution down into the comment section, and in a few minutes we will check our answer, so it will be really interesting. So how can we solve this question? First of all, let's write the 36 on the, on the left side. Let's do this right now. So we have right here a cube, a cube plus a square and minus 36, minus 36 is equal to 0. Okay, this is our first step. Right now, instead of this 36, I prefer to write 27 plus 9. So instead of this 36, I prefer to write 27 plus 9. It changed nothing, but in the same way, it helps us a lot. Let's do this right now. So as a result, we have a cube plus a square minus, inside parentheses, we have 27 plus 9. Okay, 27 27 plus plus 9. So I really hope you understand this step. We just changed this 36 by 27 plus 9. Right now let's open parentheses. Let, let's do this. So we have a cube plus a square minus 27 and of course not plus 9 but minus 9. Let's look closely what do we have. We have 27 and we have 9. Before this we have a cube and a square. So we have the third power and we have the second power. 9 can be written, okay, let's do this. So 9 can be written as 3 square, so we can write it in terms of squares. And 27 can be written as 3 cubes, so 3 times 3 times 3. So in the same way this is our of a three cubes. So right now let's change it and then we will group it cubes with cubes and square with squares. Let's do this. So we have a cube plus a square minus 27. We're gonna write three cube minus three cube and minus instead of nine we're gonna write three square equal to zero. So I really hope you understand this step. What we're gonna do next? Right now let's group. Okay we have right here a cube and we have right here three cube. We have right here a square and we have right here three square. So we can easily group squares and group uh, group cubes. Let's do this right now. So in the first parenthesis let's group our cubes. So we have a cube minus three cube inside first parentheses and in the next parenthesis we have plus we have a square minus three square. Okay so we have a square minus 3 square. Right now let's look closely what do we have inside parentheses. We have right here difference of two cubes and right here we have difference of two squares. Let's remember formulas. So the first formula is a cube uh, minus b cube. Okay, a cube minus b cube. This is a basic school formula. We have right here a minus b, a minus b and inside another parenthesis we have a square plus a b and plus b b square. This is our first formula and second formula. We have right here difference of two squares. So we have a square minus b square. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have right here a minus b, a plus b. So I really hope you you understand, you learn these two really great formulas. Okay, right now difference of two cubes, we're gonna apply this formula, difference of two squares, we're gonna apply this one. Let's do this right now. So on, from the new line, we have right here a minus three, a minus three, and inside another parenthesis we have a square plus three a and plus nine. This is our difference of two cubes. And right now we have plus a minus three, a plus three, a minus three, and a plus three equal to, right here we have zero. Right now if we look closely, we have a minus 3 right here at this point, a, a and a minus 3 we have at this point, so we can easily factor our a minus 3. Let's do this right now. So we have a minus 3, a minus 3, and inside another parenthesis, or for better understanding, I'm gonna use this type of brackets. So we have this parenthesis, a square plus 3a plus 9, a square plus 3a plus 9, and we have plus a plus 3. So plus a plus 3. Right now let's simplify this a little bit, okay? Let's simplify this expression inside this parenthesis with these with these brackets. So as a result we have a minus 3 in the first parentheses and in another parenthesis what we will have? Let's use these brackets. So we have a, we have addition all the time so we can uh, get rid of the our parentheses. So we a, a square plus 3a plus 9 plus a plus 3, okay? And right now let's change this parenthesis by uh, the, the parenthesis that we prefer. We prefer this one, so a minus 3. And inside another parenthesis, what do we have? a square. Let's leave it like that. So we have a square plus 3a plus a equal to 4a, so plus 4a. And 9 plus 3 equal to 12. Yes, yeah, so we have 12. 
12 really great equal to 0 and right now then the greatest moment because we have a product of two parentheses and a product of two parentheses equal to 0 when the first parenthesis is equal to 0 so we have uh, right here we have a minus 3 equal to 0 when the first parenthesis is equal to 0 or the second parenthesis equal to 0 or this one so a square plus 4a plus 12 is equal to 0. Really great. Right now a minus 3 equal to 0. Real quick we can find our first root. So a first equal to equal to 3. We're going to change this root, root a little bit later. Right now let's look closely at our second equation. This is a quadratic equation to be honest. We have a really great quadratic equation because we have right here coefficient 1. So we can easily write our uh, use our discriminant formula real quick. So we have a equal to 1 b equal to 4 and c equal to c equal to 12. Right now let's plug in each of these coefficients into this spot. So we have d equal to b square minus 4ac. Let's plug in each of these coefficients into this into this spot. d equal to b square 4 square minus 4 times a1 times c times 12. As a result what do we have? Our discriminant equal to 16 minus 48. So our discriminant is equal to minus 32. And this is discriminant is negative, so it implies that right here we have, so our discriminant is less than zero. So from here we will have two, two complex, complex roots. Let's solve it. Let's find our all, all possible, all possible roots. So a second and third, let's continue right here in the middle. Like, okay, so we have a second and third equal to, we have minus b plus minus square root of d and all over, all over 2a. Let's do this. So we have minus b, we have minus 4 plus minus square root of d square root of minus 32 and all over 2 times a, 2 times one. Right now, if you look closely right here, we can easily simplify this a little bit because this square root of minus 32, we can easily split it. So we can easily write it as, let's do this. So we have minus 4 plus minus square root of minus 32. Let's write as square root of minus 1 times square root of times 2 and times 16. Okay, we can easily split it like that. We can easily use this product and all over all over 2. Right now, there is a great property. Whenever we have a uh, square root of a times b, we can write it as square root of a times square root of b. And right now, let's split it. But right here, we have three values. Doesn't matter. We can easily split it uh, according to the same property. But we have one more like this uh, square root right here. So equal to, we have minus 4 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 2 times square root of 16. And all over, all over 2. Yeah, equal to really great so we have minus 4 plus minus square root of minus 1 equal to i this is our complex unit i times square root of 16 equal to 4 and we still have square root of 2 and we divide it by 2 and right now a tricky moment uh, a lot of students don't know this moment but don't know how can we do this but we can divide our numerator by 2 so this part by 2 and this part uh, by 2 so we have minus 4 divided by this 2 by the this denominator so plus minus 4 square root of 2 times i, we're going to divide by, by 2. And as a result, minus 4 divided by 2 equal to minus 2. So we have minus 2 plus minus. Right here we can easily cancel it. So we have 2 square root of 2, 2 square root of 2 times i. And these are our two complex complex roots. So right now let's write our final answer. First of all, we can easily check this a equal to 3. We can easily do this, but first of all, let's write our final answer and then we will check it. So right now we can see a graph. You can see these points of intersection. You can see uh, this from geometric perspective. So a first equal to 3, a second equal to minus 2 plus 2 square root of 2 times i, and a third equal to minus 2 minus 2 square root of 2 times i. These two roots are complex roots, okay, because we have imaginary unit, we have our i, and this one is real, real number root. And you know a lot of students, uh, right here, let's, let's rewrite this question, first of all, a cube plus a square equal to equal to 36. You know, a lot of students try to solve this question by inspection. They say, okay, right here, a cube plus a square. Let's find our a, a equal to 3. Yeah, because we have right here 3 cubed 27 plus 3 square plus 9 equal to 36. This is absolutely uh, absolutely correct expression. A lot of students say that correct answer is 3 and that's it. But if you look closely, we have two more roots. So don't forget about it because according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, we have right here the third power. So it means that we have three roots in total. So three roots, three roots in total, in total.
okay so at least we have three roots so we can easily have like two complex one real two real one complex two complex with three real roots you know and right here this is extremely important part according to a fundamental theorem of algebra so the third power is the highest power so it means three roots in total the first one real number roots and of course we have two two complex roots which is extremely important so as i said before you you can see a graph you can see these points with intersection which is extremely important part uh, of, uh, in terms of mass so thank you for your time thank you for watching this video i really hope you understand it i really hope you learned something new but definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong if you want to write your response your answer your your comment you can also do this it's really important it really inspires me a lot to make a new content every day i really ho hope you learn something new a little bit i really hope you understand my explanation it's extremely important uh, for me okay so i want to say i'm really grateful for your for watching my video i really appreciate it and thank you for your time wish you all the best in life take care of yourself and see you in the next videos have a great day